So this Bohr model of the atom that we know and uh, have sort of known for a couple of years has this kind of dense positive nucleus surrounded by the electrons in different shells. And as you've done work in chemistry, we know that we have this kind of two electrons in the inner shell, and then eight and then eight and then so on. And it's really the behavior of all of these uh, electrons in the outer shell that really determines the chemical properties of these elements. And what I'd like to do is uh, look at another model of how we can explain about how these electrons actually sit there. A way to maybe think about what's happening inside the atom is to think about the, the various energy shells that the electrons can sit on. Uh, and what might be apparent here is that um, an, uh, an electron, which I'm going to represent with one of these little grey pieces, uh, can sit quite happily on one of these steps. Uh, and it'll sit there you know, for, for as long as it needs to be. However, they, the electrons can actually also change the step that they're on. Uh, and something else which is quite apparent here is if you put an electron uh, sort of halfway between a couple of these steps, it just drops down to the lower level. It can't exist anywhere other than the black lines on this. So what we have here are a load of discrete energy levels where the atoms can sit. Uh, and they might exist at the, the very bottom level, which we're going to call the ground state, uh, right up until when they effectively leave the, the edge of the atom as they get to the very end, at which point uh, the atom uh, is no longer an atom, it's actually an ion because it's got uh, an overall uh, charge. Uh, and what I'd like to do is really look at these energy levels in a bit more detail. What I can do is I can start to represent all of these energy levels uh, with some horizontal lines. Here we have some of the energy bands that we have in maybe one of the simplest elements, which is hydrogen, which is effectively a proton uh, surrounded by just one electron. And this electron can exist in maybe the innermost shell, which we call the ground state, which is this one over here, or it can move up through various different energy shells until it escapes. And then we have this uh, uh, effectively a positive hydrogen ion, or also just uh, known as a proton. Uh, so we're going to really consider that. We have the first energy shell down here where n is equal to 1, so n is just a number. Uh, and then we've got the shell 2, 3, 4, Five, all the way up to the, the outermost shell, which is going to be effectively the, most, uh, the shell which is a bit like infinity. And because each shell is an energy shell, they also have a corresponding energy. Now, the one at the outermost is zero, uh, so anything beneath that has a negative value. Uh, and the values here I'm going to measure in electron volts. So one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And I'm just going to fill in the numbers for the different uh, shells that we have here. So perhaps by looking at the energy levels for hydrogen, uh, we can maybe think about one of these electrons as it moves from maybe the ground state up to uh, the, the, next, uh, the next energy level. Uh, and uh, what happens is it will resorb some energy, perhaps from photons, perhaps from uh, being heated up, or perhaps being excited in another way. And it sticks at this uh, energy shell here. Now it doesn't really like being there, it's not as stable as being back in the ground state. And what it does, it then loses a certain amount of energy. Uh, and we've had a change in the energy of that electron. And what this does is, as the energy is released, it's released as a photon of radiation. And we've seen in the last video that uh, the energy of a photon is equal to hf, which equals hc over lambda. And what that means is, as the, energy, uh, the electron drops uh, energy levels, it emits a certain wavelength of radiation. Each atom in the periodic table has its own certain uh, series of energy levels, and it really depends upon the makeup of the ap atom or even the compound that it's in. Uh, and what we find is that um, there are certain distinct energy changes associated with uh, various elements, and this is the same everywhere in the universe. Uh, and what we can maybe look at is the energy change from uh, E2 to E1, which is maybe going from the second shell down to the first shell, uh, and this gives off a certain frequency of radiation. And every single element has its own unique uh, sort of fingerprint, if you like. Uh, and there are only certain things that, uh, certain amounts of energy that can be given out. It can't be anything other than these certain bands or various combinations of them for every single element. There's no way that this electron exists halfway up this. It can only give out certain discrete uh, wavelengths of light. And this is what you might be quite familiar with from fireworks night where you have the red and the green fireworks uh, and you might have done some flame tests perhaps with GCSE chemistry where you've uh, uh, had uh, various salts and you, uh, you put them in a flame and you saw the different colour which helps identify the element. It's also why if you look over the street uh, at night uh, you see that the whole street lights, most of them are orange and this is because of the sodium light. This is because the sodium atoms inside are being excited uh, and then it uh, emits a certain uh, frequency or a certain wavelength of light which corresponds to this orange colour, which I'd like to look at in a bit more detail in the next video.